Hello and welcome everyone, this is Mike. I'm the founder and CEO of Sweet Dash. Welcome back to the Starting From Zero series, where we take you along the fastest path to build out a simple and effective portal for your business or organization. In this episode, we're going to build on the last episode where we introduced the concept of circles. We'll continue down that path and start to show how you will use circles to streamline your work and set up some of your first automations. Okay, so let's get started. So in the last video, we worked together to set up three different circles to accommodate our three different types of businesses. We also set up three different dashboards and assigned those circles to the dashboards and showed how that was working. And that took care of our existing companies, which you can see here. These are the existing companies and they're all assigned to a circle, but what about when we create a new company? And we'll create another one of these niche tequila companies that seem to be so popular these days. We'll call this Casa Ricard. All right, and this is gonna be a client. And then we'll set the primary contact. We need to create a new primary contact because this is gonna be the representative of the company. So let's quickly create them. And we're going to send the portal access invitation immediately and we'll click add. And now down here, they're a distribution company, but more importantly, before we fill anything else in, you'll see that we can assign them to a circle. And so we're going to assign them to our alcohol general circle, and then we're just going to save and go to the list. Okay, so Casa Ricard has been created. The email has gone out to them, and they are in the alcohol general circle which now means that when they log in, we know that they will be redirected immediately to the Alcohol General Dashboard. Now again, understand that currently that is the only part of their experience that we are customizing based on that circle, but remember that we can customize the menu items, which file folders they have access to, etc., all based on one specific circle or several combinations of circles. And we'll work up to that, but right now we're just trying to keep it very simple. So let's move over here and to further hammer home the point, we'll go to Casa Ricard and we'll just quickly impersonate. And of course what we should see is the Alcohol General Dashboard. Okay, so that's working just like we want. So now we've seen how you can set their circle when you're adding a company manually. But of course, we don't want to do these things manually. We want to create onboarding workflows that are hands off that automatically categorize and move our prospective clients through a workflow that works for us in an automated way. So to take the next step in that direction, let's go to forms. Okay, so we're here in forms and this is our first introduction to this. There are multiple types of forms in Sweet Dash. The most appropriate for our situation now is the kickoff form. There's also the update form, support ticket form, and general form. Let's not get bogged down in explaining the differences now, but right now we want a kickoff form. So you can use the default kickoff form number one. You can take this. It's provided by default in new accounts for you to just use and modify if you'd like, or you can create a new one from scratch. Either way, let's go ahead and just use the one that's provided. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a start from scratch kickoff form with just very basic information, company name, first and last name, and email address. You can create custom fields of various types and add to this form. You can use advanced blocks and add those to this form. And then you'll want to start to understand the concept of unknown targets and known targets, which you'll see here below. Known targets is here. But let's stay focused on unknown targets. These are people in your target audience that are not in your CRM. These are people that we're trying to get to complete this form and enter the top of a workflow, which is designed to move them towards being our eventual client, which means we are exchanging value with them. Okay, so we're gonna collect this data and we're not gonna add anything to this now just to keep it simple. But you'll see here that one of the selections that's very early on after role, coordinator, and salesperson assignment is circles. So we can just set right here, let's just say alcohol general circle. And what that means is that every target that completes this form, and the word target means this is an unknown person that's on the other side 
of this form. We don't know who they are yet until they complete the form. And so we use the term target to describe them as they come through our system. And what this means is that every target that completes this form is going to be assigned the role client, is going to be assigned Mike as the coordinator, and is going to be added to the alcohol general circle. And there are many, many other options here that we'll eventually get to and try to understand. But right now, what we do know is if we create this client and when they log in, they're going to be redirected to the alcohol dashboard, the alcohol general dashboard that we created. As part of the experience that we're building around that type or that category of client. That dashboard is just the first step, but we're building an entire experience around this type of client that can be customized exclusively to this type of client. So in this scenario, this form would end up being titled something like alcohol general form, or we could just call it outdoor general form, and then just change the circle here to the outdoor general, okay? You can even add multiple circles here if we wanted to, right? But if we wanted to have one form that we were gonna place in a designated area, that had the job of onboarding prospective clients of this type, then maybe this would be our form, okay? And you could create this single form and this form's job would be only to do this, only to add new prospective clients of the type outdoor. But that's not our only option. That would be one form to one circle. But you also have the option of creating and adding to this form a choice block. And if you'll notice, when I added this choice block, all of these connections down here, all the choices that were below have now disappeared. And now you'll find these same choices inside this area here based on the option that is chosen. So a choice block is a drop down menu, and I can create multiple choices. In our case, we would have. And now I can take each one of these choices and make a configuration based on that particular choice. So if they choose, if I ask the question here, what type of business are you? And they answer coffee, then I will configure here what will happen when they answer coffee. Well, I'm going to assign them to the coffee circle, among whatever other options you may choose later and you can come back here and modify these anytime you want but for right now we know that we're going to add them to the coffee circle all right let's go ahead and go down to the bottom and save that and same here for alcohol and same here for outdoor and of course you can add other questions here but this particular question is the one that's going to really define how each one of those clients enters the portal so you have the option of using a choice block. And what's unique about the choice block, and you can only use one, is it defines not only the circle, but also the role, all the really necessary and important choices that are related to bringing someone into the portal for the first time if they're an unknown target or if they're completing this form and we already know who they are, meaning they're already in your CRM, we have a separate section called known targets where you can set or change the assignments of salesperson coordinator circles etc you can treat these people that are already in our crm differently than the ones who are coming in for the first time so because of the complexity of the many assignments and the role assignments coordinator assignments all that to avoid conflicts there's only going to be one choice block available to you but let's say you don't need that. Let's say you're going to bring everybody in in a very similar way with similar roles and similar coordinators and all that. And really, the only thing that you may need to do differently with your clients is put them in different circles. Now, if that's really your only need, then you may not need a choice block. You can use a custom field for this of select box type. So we could say, what type of business are you? We're going to use a drop down menu and then we're going to say coffee. Okay, here's our three types and we're going to go ahead and create this. And now we have a new custom field called type of business. And if you notice here, we can select actions based on which ones they choose. And here we have the ability to add them to a circle and we can just add them to coffee general. 
So in this case, if they choose coffee, they'll be put in the coffee circle. If they choose alcohol, we'll put them in the alcohol circle and so on. Okay, I think this makes perfect sense. So now we have a form that'll bring everybody in according to this logic that's the same for everyone, but the difference will be that based on their choice in this particular custom field, we'll assign them to a specific circle and therefore define their experience. Okay, so I know that forms, especially a kickoff form, is a difficult thing to understand completely within this one two minute introduction. There's a lot going on here for sure, super powerful. But you will grow into it. One thing you'll want to consider and really make sure that you take advantage of in the early part of your journey is the template library. So if we go to the template library, we can go right to form templates, if you look right here. And there are hundreds of form templates available. So all you have to do is go to form templates and then you can even do a search. Let's just say you are into uh, tax prep. So we can do tax. Look at all these different forms you can take advantage of and some of them are very unique to a specific country and to a specific tax process. So you can look at these and what's good about these is that they actually introduce the custom fields directly into your account so you don't even have to create them. You can have the custom fields pre-built in your account when you add the templates, okay? And then you can work on the styling. You can make it match your specific use case. But let's look at another one like design. So here, uh, some plain forms that may be intended for embedding but as you can see, if you go to form templates without any filtering, there are forms here that are set up to be standalone at a URL so that you can direct your targets to that URL and they can complete the form. Kickoff forms can be set up to have all this content and be standalone by themselves, almost like a landing page. So let's look at how that looks and works. That's typically achieved by using these advanced blocks to bring in HTML content and then say here in this HTML content is where you're going to add all the content that will be above the fields, the fields being here, and you can add HTML content behind. And then over here in link embed, you have a wide range of styling options here where you can set a background color, background image. You can even use custom CSS which lets you completely style this. And then the direct linking options is what you would be interested in if you were making a landing page type of implementation. And maybe here you would want to use this alias or the, what we call the friendly URL and put something like onboarding, for example, right? And now we have a URL portal.vandalayimpacts backslash onboarding. And this URL will lead directly to our form. And the platform even generates a QR code for you. This one has been white labeled using the settings made available in platform branding. And this QR code will go directly to the standalone form. So it's something you can put on a flyer or on a print ad or a billboard or anything. It will lead to your standalone form, which is the top of your funnel and you can start to bring your clients in through that kickoff form. Now again, admittedly, this form is very plain. This is what we start with. You can use the template library to start with something that's much more built out and prepared, or we have some styling options like themes that you can look through and try out here and use these as a basis to get started with. This can be your starting point and you can use the colors here and custom CSS to continue customizing. Okay, so what do we learn? We learned that circles are the key to creating different experiences, different paths for your different types of prospective clients, and that you're using the platform tools to build the experiences around the circle or circles that the target is associated with and that when you add companies or contacts either manually or via a kickoff form or via the API or via any way that you add them, you're able to assign circles or 
you can set it up so that based on the target's selections in a form, they are auto-assigned circles on the way in, and therefore their experience, their pathways, are auto-assigned. So this is really powerful. We're just scratching the surface here with simple examples. But it's enough to see what the future could look like if you continue to build and layer this, quote, operating system of your organization. Each little layer that you add is another step in the direction of better systems, more automation, and therefore more efficient workflows for your business or organization. Okay, everyone, I hope that really helps close the loop on this logic of how circles are used and how they open the door to streamline and automate the processes and systems inside your organization. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.